Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson. I'm here today with a new video. I'm a hand lettering artist, a logo designer, and I make these videos. And you guys asked for me to review Affinity Photo on the iPad Pro second generation. If you don't know, I draw on paper and on the iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil. I've got reviews and different tutorials about me doing that. And I normally use an app called Procreate to create the actual artwork that I do, whether it's calligraphy or hand lettering. So today I'm gonna to be working out and showing you whether it's worth you investing that 20 pounds, 20 dollars, 20 euros, whatever, into Affinity Photo for iPad. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. When you download the app and you open it up, the first thing you realize is that it looks a lot like Photoshop on your computer. You've got all the toolbars there, you've got all the tools that Photoshop has on nearly all of them, including the select tool, the brush tool, the eraser tool, the transform tool, and you've even got layer effects on there. Now the purpose of Affinity Photo is actually in the name, Affinity Photo. It's for photo manipulation, kind of like Photoshop. But since Photoshop's been about, people have started using the brushes and creating their own brushes to create digital paintings or illustrations. So Affinity Photo, acting like Photoshop, allows you to actually do this as well. The first thing I did when I bought Affinity Photo was to check out the brush panel to see what kind of brush presets they had in there. When I clicked on that brush panel, there were loads and loads of brushes sorted out into different categories from drawing, painting, texture, dry painting, stuff like that. And there's tons of preloaded brushes. These brushes act in the same way as they do on Photoshop, kind of, and on Procreate, kind of. It's a brush that's a digital file that allows you to edit the way the brush looks when you're drawing on it, whether it's the pressure, rotation, anything like that. So the first thing you really realize about Affinity Photo is that they're not messing around. This app is actually really deep and it's kind of like Photoshop on the iPad. There are so many different tools in there that it's easy to get overwhelmed. But the good thing is, is that the actual creators of the app, the developers have got tutorials inside the app at the start as well. So when I looked at all the tools in the sidebar, just like in Adobe Photoshop, I went ahead and looked at the brush panel, which is on the far right, labeled as a brush icon. And I went to see how many brushes they had preloaded into Affinity Photo. There was a surprising amount of brushes in there from painting to textures to drawing to, to, to a lot of other things. These brushes aren't bad either. These are really good brushes. Now the main thing I love about digital painting is the fact that you can change your brushes and edit them. Now Affinity Photo have gone a step further than Procreate and Photoshop I would say for that matter because their brush editing capabilities is so complicated and deep. The more things you can change about the brush means the more things that you can control with that brush and the more unique things you can make out of that brush. So when you have your brush out and you're drawing with it and you wanna make some edits on this brush, you just press this more icon down at the bottom next to all the other like the color parts and stuff. And when you're in there, you start to realize that there are so many different things you can change. It opens up a whole window for one brush. You start to realize that there are so many different things on there from the general side of changing the brush to the texture and the dynamics. And these are all in different sections of the brush panel. Now my favorite part about the brushes in Affinity is of course you've got so much control but you would not believe the amount. When you tap dynamics uh, to change your brush control settings you realize that you have curves in there to change every possible parameter of the brush that you want. You could be so precise and create a unique brush for a unique painting to sell online. And you can import Photoshop brushes into Affinity Photo on the iPad, although they don't work the same way all the time. So you can actually create these amazing brushes inside of this, because not only have you got so much control, but you can add multiple textures and nibs to your actual brush. You just keep adding them on to create different textures. This application is very deep indeed. And I must say that it's probably one of the most amazing apps that I've used for control. Now I'm not a photo editor. I don't really like editing pictures. I'm not a photo manipulator and the app is geared towards photo manipulation. So people are editing and touching up photos like in Photoshop, but just on the iPad. I'm more of an illustrator. So Procreate is the actual app for me. It's only six pounds over here. So it's pretty cheap and I can do everything on there. And the sort of persona of the Procreate is that to create 
artwork. Now everything in Affinity Photo is kind of annoyingly placed for me because I want to draw. I don't want to edit pictures. I don't want the curves monitor showing and stuff like that. I want to be able to draw. So I want my uh, layers panel out and I want my brush panel out and I want to be able to change these brushes really easily. I want my swatches and I want all these things. Now Affinity Photo doesn't have this. They have a certain personas which in Photoshop terms is a workspace and I think they have three for different things such as selecting and changing colour and photo management. What these personas do is they change the workspace or the tools and the selections on the screen so it's easier for you to click on quicker when working in a selection mode or in a different mode. As an illustrator or a hand letterer, I want to be able to have a persona that I can create myself to have different windows out, such as the layers panel, the brush panel, and all those sorts of panels that I'll need. So because Affinity Photo isn't geared towards people illustrating content, it's not the best workspace to have, but I think it's a good trade-off for the amount of control that you can have over your brushes. Now, the next favorite feature of Affinity Photo that I will review in this is the fact that you have an effects panel. So just like in Photoshop, when you would go to blending options by right-clicking on a layer and changing it to have a shadow, to have, you know, color overlay, you can do this within the app too. You can have different layers, different groups, and you can merge groups, merge layers, color coordinate. And the great thing about Affinity Photo is that you have all the functionality of all the effects, such as 3D, embossing, shadows, color overlay, inside this app, which makes it really easy to do. Another great thing about Affinity Photo is the fact that you can add text and change your font and add layer styles to the font. It is amazing. If you want to create video thumbnails or YouTube thumbnails for your videos on the iPad, this is the best app for you because you can actually edit things, draw things and do whatever you want. You can mask, I believe you can mask and you can also have a gradient tool you can cut things out and you've got basically a Wacom Cintiq with you the whole time running Photoshop all the time inside your iPad. Not only can you just add fonts, but you can actually change the spacing of them, like the kerning, and you can change all these different values, which is really cool. I'm not actually yet sure whether you can import your own fonts, which would be good. I know they have open type features, which is a very a must have for an editing software like this. You have to have open type features for certain typefaces, but this is just incredibly powerful to have whenever you're just doing work on the iPad. Now I don't need to get up my laptop or my MacBook to actually edit a YouTube thumbnail. I can do it straight from the iPad. Now, one of the most funny aspects of Affinity Photo is the fact that you have a pen tool in it, which is crazy. That's right, you literally have effect tools inside of Affinity Photo, and you also have a Pathfinder tool as well, the equivalent of a Pathfinder tool. Vector artwork is something that I do all the time. I'm creating logos for clients. Now, I went ahead and tried to create a logo on this with the pen tool, but it was so weird and it was kind of too much like Photoshop's pen tool that it didn't work great for me. I couldn't keep the handles vertical and horizontal by holding any button, and it was just difficult for me to close path shapes. But the pen tool does work. You have vector shapes, so you can create vector files within this. So you can obviously create logo designs in this and I guess save them as an EPS or some sort of vector format, put them into Illustrator and carry on working on them. This is crazy stuff that you have within such a cheap application. I mean, we're talking about 20 pounds, which is really nothing for an application that has vector tools in it that you can draw on, have the brush control with it, and you also have Photoshop on your iPad. This is just amazing stuff. Basically, if you have Photoshop CC, then a lot of the tools that you'll need out and about that you want on your iPad will be in Affinity Photo for iPad. And because the iPad Pro 2 is actually so quick, and fast, it runs like a dream. But this doesn't come up with some bad points about the application. So here are some of the gripes that I have about Affinity Photo for iPad. I do not like the workspace inside of it when you get it. The workspace and the personas are geared only towards people creating photo editing. So they're only editing photos. They're not actually creating anything other than editing photos. I wanna be able to have my brushes panel out if I want it. And I want to be able to have the navigator out if I want it all the time. I want the tools to be in certain areas that I'll be drawing with. I want to have the ability to drag tools out of the workspace and put it somewhere on the screen that I can quickly access. Another gripe I have is that the brushes don't work the best 
either. I know I was talking and raving about all the brushes and the amount of control you have, but it just does not feel the same. I had to do a lot of editing on some brushes to make them into a calligraphy brush. And yes, they do have stabilization in the brushes and you can enable that, which is great for calligraphy or brush lettering. But the brushes don't feel the same, such as the pencil brush, which is just a very easy brush to have. It's just a normal brush that you would normally have in Photoshop, the pencil brush to do some quick sketching. It's not a very good brush. And there's a lot of noise issues when I'm drawing. As you can see, when I'm drawing this word cool on the hand lettering side of things, you can see that it doesn't look as good as if I was to do it in Procreate because Procreate has some amazing brushes. One of the biggest downfalls of Affinity Photo is the fact that it's slower than Procreate. Procreate is so quick and they've got a new update coming out in Procreate 4, which makes it a ton quicker. And that's why I'll be sticking with Procreate 4. Overall, I do like Affinity Photo. I think it's really cool that it's so versatile and so deep, but will I change from Procreate to Affinity Photo for iPad? I don't think so, not yet. Although there are some really cool features in Affinity Photo, I don't think it's right for me to change because Affinity Photo hasn't got the finesse of Procreate. And when you're creating stuff, that like whether you're drawing or whatever, you want simplicity and you want to be able to have uh, the tools in front of you that you want to use. You don't want to be distracted of what you're doing. Now, Affinity Photo isn't made for illustrators, and I know this, but if you are an illustrator, I would highly recommend for you to wait a little while before getting Affinity Photo because they'll probably be changing and updating certain parts of the application to make it run a lot smoother. The reason is, is because it keeps crashing when I'm creating stuff on the screen. For some reason, Affinity Photo crashes and there are a lot of bugs inside of the application. So if you do buy it, be aware that there are tons of bugs inside of it. Will I create logo designs from Affinity Photo? If I was desperate, I would give it a go. If I wanted a bit of fun, I'd give it a go, but I wouldn't do it out of choice. I would maybe draw and sketch or use some really cool brush options inside of there to create some different kinds of work. I would even paint in there as well because some of the painting tools and the mixing tools are really fun to use. But I am still all for Procreate at the minute. Just the finesse of it just works so much better. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video talking all about Affinity Photo on the iPad. I know my YouTube channel has been slightly different over the past couple of months since I had the iPad because there's a lot for me to talk about and it affects my job a lot. So I wanted to make some videos off it. If you want to see more videos about stuff like this and tech for designers, leave your links down below or leave your questions even or comments down below in the comment section. But I would also love to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Guys, if you don't know, I use Squarespace on my website for my client projects and I also use them to sell some of my brushes inside of Procreate and my design resources. Squarespace makes it so easy for anyone to create a website for a really good price and I use it for all of my things online from blogging to you know client work to photography for anything. If you need a website, Squarespace is the place to be and you can check out mine down below in the description but also press that link down below which will give you 10% off Squarespace when you click on it. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video. See you soon.